Back in the book segment tonight, rolling with Corolla. A few weeks ago, Barbara Walters interviewed New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Okay, Governor, I feel very uncomfortable asking this question when I'm sitting opposite you. But you are a little overweight. More than a little. Yeah. Yeah. There are people who say that you couldn't be president because you're so heavy. What do you say to them? No, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's ridiculous. I think people watched me uh, for the last number of weeks in Hurricane Sandy doing 18-hour days, so I don't really think that would be a problem. And joining us now from Los Angeles, Adam Corolla. First of all, Corolla, is the moon full out there or what? Last time we saw you, you were kind of clean shaven, and now you look like Lon Chaney Jr. <laughs> Thank you very much for those supportive words. <laughs> um, no, it's not a full. Every day's a full moon in LA. Yeah, there wasn't. Nuts. You didn't meet a gypsy and woman on the way to the studio, or any of that, huh? <laughs> You got to be a little no. conversant with the Wolfman. I know I'm getting stared, Lon Chaney Jr., Gypsy. All right, let's just start. Do you think Christie's yes. weight will matter if he decides to run for president? No. No? Well, first off, isn't president the ultimate fat job? I mean, you don't fly fat coach. Cats. Yeah, fat cats. You no host doubt. a bunch of, yeah, you host a bunch of dinners. And even your office is oval shaped. It's like you have a fat office. So it's not like. The president has to get up on an extension ladder and clean the gutters or anything. So <laughs> you can be fat and be the president. You can't be a fireman and be fat, but you can be the president. And then secondly, let's take a look at the voters. They're fat. I mean, I went to Disneyland a couple days ago, and it's the fattest place on earth. I mean, so the chances it's insane are Christy might how carry fat Disneyland. people are. Right. All right, but, but, you know, Grover Cleveland, a hefty boy. Uh, William right. Taft, William Taft, I mean, uh, specially designed knickers to get him out on the golf course, and, and they were big. Yeah, I don't think that, that if Christie runs for president, the weight <clears throat> is going to be an issue. Now, taxes going up. No, and on. also, who's, go ahead, go ahead. who's voting? Yeah, who's people, doing the said, voting? He, I he mean, may capture a bit of, of the Zoftig uh, vote. That definitely could go his way. But, but you know, well, that's are, how it works, isn't it? I mean, the are Democrats who are hefty too, and if they run against Christie, they might be torn about who is heftier. Uh, okay, taxes going up, and you say? I say I, I, I hate it. I, I, I think it is uh, un-American, and I was just thinking about it earlier today, and I thought we should look at this country as a team, and the coach is the president. And basically what we're saying is, is, hey, Kobe Bryant, I know you're averaging 35 points a game, but we're going to need you to average 38 points a game so that we can win. And my thing is, is if you want to win, leave Kobe alone. He's not broken. He's scoring already. But there's a whole bunch of other guys that are on the bench that are averaging four points a game. So let's focus on those guys. And some guys that are averaging zero and then some that are taking points away from Kobe. So let's focus on the group if, in fact, you want to win. Let's focus on the group that's not being productive instead of putting a higher burden on a guy that's already shooting the lights out. But don't we need to have to focus on the people who aren't being that productive money to to teach them how to be productive? So you take in money and give it to them so they'll be better. Right, so we can depress them and rob them of their dignity and get them to produce even less in the future and to indoctrinate their children into this horrible sort of farm where everything is handed out for free. And you, no, it's a horrible uh, when you were, when idea you were and obviously up, it doesn't work. When you were growing up, because I know I've read that taco book, uh, you uh, had a kind of a situation like that where your mom was getting assistance and stuff, right? My mom was getting welfare, and I just naively said to her one day when I was about eight or nine, hey, mom, why don't you get a job? And that way we'd have some money, we'd get a nicer car and all that good stuff. And she said, if I get a job, I'll lose my welfare, which is uh, not exactly the thing that children's books are made of, but uh, I got the message and sort of went the other way with it. There you go. And it's an interesting story, Corolla. We appreciate it. Uh, we don't have time for the third topic about L.A. hit and runs. We'll do that next week. Adam Corolla, everybody. There he is. He doesn't look like Lon Chaney. I apologize for that.